The Codevel CrossPod, spelled XPod, is a 2.3 to 4.5 liter sling, depending on the compressed mode that it's in. And it has a nice tactical look going on about it as well. I'm Tom, the founder of Pack Hacker, where we use our expertise and real world experience to provide practical resources and honest opinions, guiding you towards smarter travel. So if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. And if you wanna know more about slings, head over to our sling bag guide on packhacker.com. We cover everything you would ever want to know. Let's jump right into the Code of Bell CrossPod, a sling bag that Mark and I have been testing for the last month in Detroit and Chicago. Let's jump in. Kicking it off with the material and aesthetic, there is a lot going on with this sling bag here. With all these straps, these strap keepers, zippers, and zipper pulls going on, definitely seems like a lot and a bit confusing at first, but everything here has a very specific function, and we're gonna get into every last detail in this review. From a branding perspective, there's a simple black on black coat of bell logo and mark going on here, and then we have them on the buttons as well. Also on the Hypalon poles here, the Hypalon zipper poles, we've got Code of Bell there. On the other side, we have the small logo mark as well. So from a branding perspective, definitely like that. Not a ton going on and overall it's pretty minimal. Now if we open the bag up, there's just one more place for a logo here on the interior of this front compartment. So there you go, you got Code of Bell designed in Los Angeles codeofbell.com right at the bottom here. Most of the team here at Pack Hacker thinks the sling bag looks slick. However, we polled our Instagram audience to get everybody else's thoughts as well. And here are the results. If you wanna be involved in future polls, head over to at Pack Hacker on Instagram, give us a follow and participate in future polls. Also to note on this look, it's important to note that these compression straps can be taken on or off. So here we have them on, you can easily take them off. And when they're off, this expansion area that we're gonna get into in a second still functions with these side buckles as well. So the compression straps, on or off, either way, it doesn't matter. The main fabric on this sling is X-Pack, which is a waterproof fabric. Doesn't mean that the whole sling is waterproof since there's some other materials and zippers going on so water can get in, but it is a highly weather resistant sling with this X-Pack material going on. It is a strong fabric, it is lightweight, the only thing is that it's a little bit easier to puncture than say something like 1680D ballistic nylon, which is that thicker nylon that's kind of in a square pattern. But if a puncture or a cut does happen, there is a diamond ripstop going on here as well as a square grid ripstop as well. So any punctures or pokes that happen will not spread due to the engineering and design of this material. At the time of this review, the cross pod is available in three different colors. So we have the black here, if you're new to the channel, we usually always pick black. That's just kind of what we do. And then there are two other colors, a navy blue and a deep moss as well. So wrapping up the rest of the materials, there is a lot going on here. So I'm gonna try blast through this pretty quickly. There is ballistic nylon going on up here. So that main fabric again is X-Pack, got ballistic nylon towards the back. And then along with that X-Pack, there is a polyester and ripstop nylon liner kind of sandwiched together along with the X-Pack fabric. We have grippy Hypalon grab points here at the bottom, these two little lash loops going on, as well as these zipper pulls. So that's gonna give you a really nice, grippy, rubbery feel on the places that you need it the most. Then we have ITW buckles going on up here at the front of the compression straps. Kind of like the funky look of these ones going on. I think it just adds to the overall aesthetic of the pack. Nice that it's kind of got this hole in there. They look pretty minimal and almost like kind of sci-fi-ish. And then on the sides here, we have YKK buckles. Um, wrapping it all up, we have YKK AquaGuard zippers, which pair really nicely with that X-Pack material for additional weather resistance. And then we have another zipper in the back here. It's kind of this YKK lockable zipper. So it's kind of hard to pull. It's pretty much self-locking when the head of the zipper pull is in this down position. When you pull that zipper pull up, it just easily unzips. You can test this right now if you have a pair of jeans on with a YKK zipper, guarantee that it has a similar zipper to this one. Well, almost guarantee it, so you can test that. Okay, so a ton of different components, materials, just generally a lot going on here. 
all of these material choices feel very well thought out and everything is pulled together in a very cohesive way. And this is something that's really special about the Code of Bell CrossPod and that we've really loved in our testing as well. Kicking it off with the exterior of the sling, starting with the sling strap going on here, arguably the most important piece. So it's fastened with a really big ITW buckle here at the top. This is pretty great if you wanna wear it fanny pack style and it's positioned right in the middle so you can easily strap this to your back, grab those straps, pull it around your body. So that's a definite plus there. And it also works quite well in sling style as well. Some other giant buckles that we've seen on slings we've noticed can kind of get caught on your shirt. Not the case with this big ITW buckle in the way that it's positioned here on this strap. One thing to note here is that if you are using a larger, say 35 liter travel backpack on your back, and then this thing at your front, if that bag is heavy and you're wearing this in the front, you're definitely gonna feel this buckle here in the back when you do put that larger bag on. Some slings will forego a buckle altogether, so take a look at the Heim Planet Transit Line sling pocket. That one just has what we like to call a new wave sling strap, so there's no buckle there going on whatsoever. And then other slings, like for example, the Air Day Sling 2, will place this buckle towards the side here so that it's a little bit out of the way, makes it easier to wear the sling on your front and a larger backpack on your back. This is more of an observation rather than a con. It's just something to note if you wanna use it with a larger travel backpack. Code of Bell does have a note on their website that pertains to this buckle here and it says, new stock will come standard with self-locking magnetic buckles for the shoulder strap. So maybe in one of the future iterations we will see kind of a magnetic buckle going on here. We've got this ITW buckle for this one. From a strap management perspective, there's also a lock going on in the front here. So some slings and some waist packs will kind of forego any type of strap management. And then you've just got these two extra pieces of slack laying around. But Code of Bell has handled this in two ways with the cross pod. We have one elastic loop going on here, which is nice to kind of keep this going on. Uh, you can keep this in the middle, it'll, you know, not give you a loop like this when you're using it. And then on the side here, there is a plastic clip as well that will either stay with this, um, kind of fasten like that. Otherwise, you can take this plastic clip, let me see if I can get a good shot here, and you can actually take that off and stick it here in between. So you can kind of clip that right in. So now the edge, of this is clipped right into the pack. And that just gives you way cleaner strap management as well. One thing we noticed with the elastic keeper here and the plastic clip at the end is if you're shifting this from the back to the front of your body quite a bit, these things can get jostled around a little bit and kind of move around. If you wanna see a sling that handles this really well, take a look at the Peak Design 5 liter sling. There is a bit of a mechanism there that you can just kind of pull it up and the strap automatically loosens really kind of handy and you really avoid a bunch of additional strap stuff going on here. At the end of that strap, you'll find two little padded pieces going on here and they are little hidden pockets as well. So kind of similar to what we have in the back here with that lockable zipper. Got that going on, self-locking zipper. That's a good compartment for headphones or just kind of smaller items that you want to keep separate from the rest of the bag. And then you have some YKK buckles going on at the end of the strap here as well that manages the compressing and uncompressing of the front part of this sling bag. Another small annoyance to note here is that I can kind of feel these straps going on on the back side of my arms as I'm wearing this bag on the back. So as you're walking around, you can kind of feel that. Again, just kind of like a minor gripe. And if you get the sling positioned correctly on your back, you don't really notice it. But if it is hanging a bit down, some of these excess strap points and all this stuff going on here can kind of get in the way and rub against the back part of your arm. Again, kind of a minor annoyance if you're wearing a t-shirt, just thought I would point that one out as well. Another small usage note here is that if the sling is tighter and you sling it around to the front of your body, you're gonna kind of get those T-Rex arms going on as you're trying to access what's inside. Keeping it looser definitely gives it a little bit of an easier access in the front of your body when you need to access everything inside. The back panel here is very nicely padded and super comfortable to wear. So we love that that's going on. If you do have any items that are a little bit kind of harder or pokey, 
gonna be mitigated by the padding of that back panel. There's a handle at the top of the sling made of folded nylon webbing. And if we flip that sling over, you're gonna see some Hypalon here at the bottom. So this is a Hypalon attachment point down here in the middle. It can also be used as kind of a smaller handle if you do wanna grab it from that. And you have these smaller attachment points on the sides for the compression strap. Speaking of the compression straps, there is a lot going on with them and I don't think I've ever ran into a compression strap this complicated, so buckle up. There are two Hypalon attachment points at the top. This is where the aluminum G-hooks attach. And then we have this nylon webbing leading down to this ITW buckle. Again, that ITW buckle is, has kind of an interesting style to it, an interesting look, especially when compared to these YKK buckles on the side, so that's definitely great. Now again here, strap management is very similar to the front sling. So we have these elastic keepers here that can go over the strap and kind of manage it a little bit more. And then we have this plastic clip here as well, which you can roll up and attach in a very similar fashion to what you can do on the front. So you can roll these up and attach them, kind of keep them tidy as well. Moving on down, more nylon webbing, and then you have the code of bell buttons here. When you unbutton those, there's also Velcro going on here. So, holy cow, that was a ton on compression straps. And uh, I forgot to talk about the main benefit of a compression strap. So you can hang like a towel or a t-shirt or something a little bit larger, maybe a jacket on the outside of this thing, tighten it down, compress it against the sling, and you have it hanging there ready and good to go. Moving on to the interior of the bag, starting with the hidden pocket on the back. This is against your back, arguably the most secure pocket and great for flatter items. So we just pull out this YKK zipper out of the zipper garage and we got a nice kind of pocket back here. Perfect for a passport or other flatter items that you wanna keep secure against your back. Again, this pocket is very similar to these side pockets with these concealed YKK zippers on the sides. Moving on to that compressible compartment in the front, there are two different ways to access it. So the first is great to access when it's in compress mode. So you just kind of unzip this from the top and there you go, you have access. Inside here we have a YKK uh, hook that's gonna be able to hold on to keys. So you just kind of push this down when you wanna take the keys out, very quick, very easy to manage. Other than that, this pocket is pretty much a giant compartment. So inside is a jacket, really nice to kind of compress and pack one of these up. This is the Patagonia Storm Racer, really kind of lightweight rain shell going on. And then you're just left with this nice, beautiful orange interior. Very easy to see any darker black gear going on on the inside here. Creates a nice pop of contrast. Since most of your gear probably isn't blaze orange, unless you've got everything really color coordinated with blaze orange in that case, uh, send us a photo because that'd be really awesome. So when we unbuckle these straps at the top and on the sides, this is kind of what holds it rolled in place, the sides here. And then we unbuckle these compression ones so we can get access to the zipper. So unbuckle these side ones. And then you just have a massive compartment going on here. Again, this brings the liter capacity, almost doubles the liter capacity of this sling. So if you wanna put a water bottle in here or a jacket, really kind of compress it down with the compression straps and these side ones. Now, if you don't wanna utilize this space, it's easy enough to zip this closed. Give this a fold and roll over and then attach these side buckles here to kind of keep this compressed. And you can tighten that down or loosen it based on what's inside. So a really modularly sized pocket going on here. Really love that a lot more than I thought I would. So we kind of got this unboxed it at the beginning. We're kind of like, what the heck is going on here? But in actual use, it's nice to have that versatility and you can load it out specifically for your needs for that day. So when in fully compressed mode, you can kind of see that fabric folded on the inside here. That's the fabric that will uncompress and make this pocket really massive. Lastly, the main compartment on this sling is the zipper that's closer to you than that one of the front compartment. Unzip that and you have a very nice open space with an orange interior. There are two zippered mesh pockets on the front and one zippered mesh pocket on the back. So we tested this with a couple items. Nintendo Switch does fit in there. A lot of people ask us about that, so I wanted to make sure to show that kind of in the main compartment here. You could also add your phone here, really anything else. And one of the things that I really love about these mesh pockets going on here is that you can leave them open for taller items. So if you want some kind of division or segmentation inside, 
leave that open and you have that additional space. So we got just a pack of Orbit gum inside of here. And then if you want something that maybe you need to access a little bit less, maybe you got some first aid items, maybe some wet wipes, just things that you need on occasion, keep that zipped up here, nice and low profile in the front as well. So two different kind of carry modes for that. Leave the pocket open to add a simple division inside of the sling, which a lot of other slings do, or zip it fully completely shut if you don't need access to that item a lot. And then again, it's got that smaller mesh pocket towards the back, some field notes in here, as well as a pen. Love taking notes, getting those ideas down on the road. If you do want a quick pro tip on these zippers, I'd recommend placing uh, the double set of zippers on each side. So maybe you create a mental model in your head. On the right-hand side, you've got the two zippers that will open the front compartment. On the left-hand side, you've got the two zippers that will open the one that's a little bit further back and closest to you. So a little pro tip on zippers, kind of keep those away from each other. So we have them all in the middle here. <laughs> There's just kind of a lot going on and it's hard to tell which zipper belongs to which zip. At the time of this review, Mark and I have been testing the Code of Bell CrossPod over the course of one month in Detroit and Chicago. Overall, we really like the look and feel, all of these smart features going on that allow us to customize the sling based on our needs for carry for that day. Really dig all that, some high quality materials going on here as well. So to wrap this thing up with some pros and cons, there is a lot of innovative design that feels really intuitive. The sling is very comfortable to wear with this back panel across your chest, once you get it situated right, and this stuff is no longer kind of rubbing on the back of your arm. Lastly, there are some great organization options inside of the main compartment of the sling with those mesh pockets, as well as the ability to expand that front pocket for larger loadouts. On to some of the cons, there is a lot going on that's a little bit complex and could be overkill for some people. The strap management system can kind of come undone easily as you're flipping the sling from the front to your back. And lastly, it is a little bit large in the fully expanded state. So the cross pod has a pretty low profile when it's compressed. When it's expanded, it definitely gets out there and the profile gets pretty large. Just remember that this expandability is optional. Code of Bell has taken the idea of a sling and souped it up to make it so much better and more functional. Although there's a lot going on with the sling bag, everything has a purpose and once you start getting used to it, it all feels quite intuitive to use. Although we have a couple of minor gripes, overall the cross pot is pushing the boundaries of what a sling can be and we really love that. So there you have it, our review on the Code of Bell cross pod. We would love to hear in the comments below what you think of this thing. Thank you for keeping it here at Pack Hacker, your guide to smarter travel. We'll see you in the next video.